question you want to go over? Two, four, or six? Uh, two. Two? Yeah. All right, what'd you do? Uh, factors, so, the numbers would be negative four and one. So, x minus four? Yeah, x minus four and x minus one. Or x plus one. Yeah. Raise your hand if you got x equals negative 4 and x equals negative 1 is your answer. Good. So pretty easy problem. Already set equal to 0. Don't have to do much, right? Good job, Angel. Angel, go ahead and pick the next person. Tony, which one do you want to do? Four or six? Uh, four. All right. So uh huh. And then I got x. Can I stop you there for a second? So these numbers, negative 6 and 2, would work if I put my finger over the negative sign. <laughs> so what we're going to have to do first, before you do that, is pull out a GCF of negative 1. Tony, if you multiplied negative 1 times this stuff inside and get this as your answer, what would you actually put in here? X squared. X squared. Yep. So negative 1 times this equals a positive. Negative 12. Okay, now, Tony, inside your parentheses, if you factor this one, what do you get? Because those two numbers will add to be 4, but multiply to be negative 12. Mm -hmm. So you factored correctly. OK, now we need to solve. What would you do to solve, Tony? Right, so you already have zero, and to get rid of the positive 6, you have to subtract it. So x plus 6 equals 0, and x minus 2 equals 0. So you have to subtract the 6. And then you have to do the same for the other side, but uh, add 2. Raise your hand if you got those as your two answers. I'll explain the negative one. Class, what does the negative do to the graph? The negative sign either makes your graph go up or down. In our case, the graph is going to be opening down. And then the answer is that <coughs> it crosses as negative 6 and 2. So what do you do with this negative 1? Well, if you set each of these equal to 0, x minus 2 equals 0, x plus 6 equals 0, and if you set negative 1 equal to 0, class can negative 1 equal 0. Yes or no? The answer is no solution. Negative 1 cannot equal 0. So basically what that does is you don't, you don't have to include that in your answer. Um, I wanted to point that out because sometimes you will have like an x or a negative x or a negative x squared, and you just set that equal to 0. So we're just setting a pattern of setting them equal to 0. All right. Good job, Tony. Tony, pick the next person to do number six.
Brendan? Now what? Wait, wait, wait. What do we got over here? So, I put mine kind of in between those to recognize that it's your B value. Continue, Brendan. 15 goes on bottom, and 50 goes on top. Yes. Then on the side is 10, 5. So what do I write over here? Now, Brendan changed the variable. Oh, I mean W. Okay. But if you feel more comfortable with using X, you may, but go back to the original variable. It's kind of like, do you want me to change your name because I don't like your name? No, you want me to keep your original name. <laughs> so W plus 10 and W plus 5 equals 0. So we're setting them equal to zero. Subtract ten. And you subtract five from the What do you get? X equals negative ten and x equals negative five. Those are our two solutions. Remember what your solution represents, it makes the equation true. So you could take negative ten, or let's use negative five. Negative five times negative fifteen is Positive 75. Negative 5 squared, negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. 25 plus 50 is 75. 75 is equal to 75. Again, that's how you check your answer. So there we did questions 2, 4, and 6. Make sure they're set equal to 0. In this problem, we had to move it over. Um, again, pay attention to your factoring. And if you need to change them to different variables, you can go back to x. But in the original answer, it's nice to use the original variable.